If you cover kinetics in your classroom, there are lots of ways that you can talk about the chemical rates of reaction without getting too much into the mathematics, into the breakdown of mechanistic equations that we usually do in an advanced chemistry class. A really great demonstration for demonstrating the effects of concentration, and you can do this with heat too, of different chemical reactions is to use the classic iodine starch reaction. It's a clock reaction, so it means after a finite amount of time, you'll go from a completely colorless solution into a very dark blue-black compound that's almost impossible to see through. So you can get a very sharp endpoint to your reaction. One fun way that you can wrap this up in your classroom is to make it a competition between your students. So we have our student volunteers here today, and they each have two cups in front of them. And I tell my students that we're going to have a competition today to see who can hold their concentration the longest, who can focus and really narrow in on. And if they really concentrate and really focus, nothing will happen inside of their cups. So go ahead and pick up both your cups, and you guys are just going to pour them back and forth from one cup to the other. And you have to keep focused. Don't get distracted. I know there's lights, there's an audience. You know, stay very focused on what's going on, and we'll see who can hold their concentration the longest. So ready? Let's go. And stay focused. Don't let yourself get distracted. Don't think about the cute kid that's sitting in the seat next to you. Don't think about that term paper that you've got coming up that's due in two days. Don't think about the football game that's coming up on Friday. Don't think about band practice after. Oh, oh, well, it looks like only one person could really hold their concentration the longest. So we have our champion over here who could focus the longest and keep hers going the longest. Now, the secret to this is I just mix up the solution the way that it's written up in your write-up. The two solutions are separated, and only when they mix together do they actually make that blue-black complex. What you do is just fill up one of them. I use the same starch solution for every one of them. They have the exact same concentration. And then the potassium iodate, I'll take a small amount into one cup, a bigger amount into the second cup, a bigger amount into the third, and a bigger amount into the fourth. And I just play with it until it gives me a good amount of time. You don't want this to go in two seconds, but you don't want it to take 40 minutes to go through because you've got other things to get to. But it's a nice way to kick off the idea of what might be different. And when they see it from an audience standpoint, your students only see two different liquids. They're all about the same level, so I've diluted them with an extra amount of water till they all come out to being about the same volume. So when they pour back and forth, the least concentrated solution actually is the one that wins. So you can spin this either way. I usually spin it to see who can hold on to their concentration the longest, but in reality, the most concentrated student is the one that turns first, that they gets that black complex. The more concentrated it is, the faster the reaction will happen. Now a couple of tips on setting this up. When you make the two solutions, the potassium iodate in water will have a very long shelf life. It'll last, I've, never, I've used it from year to year and it's been fine. The starch solution though is not as stable. If you want to make the starch solution ahead of time and store it on your shelf for weeks or months at a time, follow the recipe as written. You need to take some of the soluble starch and dissolve it in boiling water. I have found easier than that. I just have a tub, a big tub of laundry starch that they use for spray starch for ironing. That works way better. It's already dissolved. It gets a little bit cloudy, but it works really well. But soluble starch will work too. You have to add the hydrogen sulfide ions, and then there's a part where you have to add sulfuric acid. If you hold off on adding the sulfuric acid, then it stays stable for a very long period of time. So what I do is I just store it, I take the amount of solution that I need, I add the small amount of sulfuric acid right before I need it, and then it works out really well. If you let this sit for a couple of weeks and it still has the sulfuric acid in it, it doesn't quite change the same. You can do other variations of this too. If you want to turn this into an inquiry lab, you can give your students a burette filled with the sulfuric acid solution, one molar or 0.1, actually 0.1 molar tends to work better, and small cups of both the potassium iodate solution and the starch solution with the hydrogen sulfite in it, and they can mix and see what happens by adding more sulfuric acid to change the rate of reaction. Then you can make it a competition, and whoever gets to an exact amount of 10 seconds for a color change, or closest to exactly 10 seconds, or you can make it like a game show and closest to 10 seconds without going over if you want an additional challenge. But they can play with the ratios and start to see what effect additional acid has on the rate of this reaction. So they can start to play with the concentrations of the potassium 
iodate, or they can play with the concentrations of the hydrogen sulfide ion and the concentration of the acid to see what all of these things do to this reaction. So it's another way you can take this exact same experiment and spin it into an inquiry lab rather than just a demonstration if you want to go a little bit further into the chemistry with your students. You can also use this really nicely for temperature reactions. If you heat this up slightly, don't go beyond 40 or 50 degrees Celsius because it will start to decompose. And put one in an ice bath, you can very clearly show the effect of increasing and decreasing temperature on reaction rate as well. It's a really beautiful reaction for showing rates of reaction very clearly, and you can spin it into a fun gag for your students if you want to. I've also used this in parent-teacher conference night, or not parent-teacher conference, but the back-to-school night when the parents come back and get their kids' schedules and all that stuff. Uh, I've turned this into the parents, and you can have a lot more fun with adults than you can usually have with your students and poke a little bit more fun at the parents if you want to as well and say, who is having a purity test and who can keep the pure thoughts the longest? Uh, it's another other fun variation you can try. But it's a really great way to introduce kinetics to my students, and I would suggest that you have a chance to do it as well. Thank you.